Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, welcome back to Fallout Tailored to Wastelands. Well, last time, we made our way to Vault 112 and visited Tranquility Lane. And today, we find ourselves deep within the DC ruins in a very special location indeed. So special, in fact, because it's not special at all. Okay, sorry, I promise I'm not going to spend the entire episode speaking in riddles. What I mean by that is, uh, yes, the DC ruins are a bit of an odd location in Fallout 3 because uh, they can't just be one giant ruin in the way that Boston is uh, in Fallout 4. Technical limitations at the time just meant that wasn't particularly feasible. Instead, the DC ruins is effectively a series of uh, self-contained uh, urban ruin bubbles uh, that you travel between primarily by going underground through a tunnel, primarily a metro tunnel, in fact, and then back up into another one. But what's very interesting about these blobs is they are most definitely not created equal. You see, some regions, the Mall in particular is an excellent example, pretty much all players will find their way there. Why? Because you're told to go there. Go to the Mall, go to the Museum of Technology, go get this off your flipping pot. Other regions are much less well advertised, and uh, just a handful, the region I'm in being a perfect example, take this to such an extreme that they're functionally secret areas. What I mean by that is, you can speak to literally every NPC in this entire game. You can read uh, every note and go through every single bloody terminal, and uh, in all of that time, nobody will ever tell you anything about this area, the Longform Plaza. No one will ever give you any reason or indication that you ought to come here. And it's really easy to assume that this was just, you know, an oversight, a mistake, something that Bethesda came to relatively late in development and just didn't have time to properly populate. But I don't think that's true. In fact, I think the opposite's true. Bethesda loves these areas because areas like this, tiny out of the way corners of the map where nothing particularly important happens, that's where Bethesda loves hiding the elaborate easter eggs, the weird jokes, and some downright terrifyingly obscure unmarked missions. Speaking of which, starting at the metro station, just just take a right and head into what immediately looks like a bit of a dead end, because just around the corner, we've got something truly rather weird right here. So, okay, a grave. And by the way, don't make the mistake I did. If you're playing along at home and you are playing Tailored to Wastelands, don't forget, in Fallout 3, you don't need a shovel to actually go digging up graves. Because this is technically New Vegas, you do. I didn't bring a shovel, I had to go and get one between episodes. So, okay, thankfully, I can actually now just crack this open and, uh, okay, some standard loot, but also search party log number one. First time I thought to update the log since leaving Canterbury. Guard of the Citadel wouldn't let us in, but said the scribe had given Cheryl the medicine at least two weeks ago and sent her along to the Rangers. From the sound of it, Miles didn't make it as far as the Citadel. Damn shame, he was a good mutt. Still no sign of Cheryl. Rumours about the city are true. Place is a death trap. Mutants and psychos at every turn. Cheryl's tough enough, but I'm worried, especially with Miles missing. Emmett just about went to pieces the first time we ran into a centaur. We should be able to reach the Ranger compound before sundown tomorrow. Chaos Scouts ahead, looks like the coast is clear for now. With any luck, Cheryl's holed up with them, and we can start back home. Here lies Henry, Mutie saw him going for water in the street, there was nothing we could do to help him. If anyone else has come looking for us, we'll leave word with the Rangers. So, yes indeed, this basically begins an unmarked mission as we follow in the footsteps of some people who were themselves at trying to track down Cheryl. So okay, that's going to be my destination in a just a moment, but before we do, yes indeed, as I was saying, these weird, obscure, out-of-the-way regions that you have no reason to visit, this is where Bethesda very often puts a whole bunch of effort into Easter eggs, weird jokes, etc, etc. So uh, let's just, uh, yes, mosey on round the corner and see what we can find. Yes, you might just look at this street right here and think, okay, there's a cafe, there's a barber shop over there, just wander along the street, etc, etc. No. My destination is round the back of those buildings. There is a hidden alleyway between the building and that wall. That's where we're actually bloody going. Though I'm pretty sure, yes indeed, we're gonna have a few mutants between me and them. Don't mind me, bloody hell, there was just a grenade. Okay, don't mind me, guys. Don't mind me. Just gonna pop your heads off with some lovely, lovely critical hits. Marvelous. 
And off his head goes B. Oh, blimey. Okay, more cars are exploding behind me. Never mind, there's, there's more mutant jet though. There's, okay, there's a lot more mutants than I was expecting. Possibly only some of them are aware of uh, my existence. Right, I'm pretty sure you threw a grenade, didn't you? Well, that's just bloody rude of ya. Right, a few crits should hopefully sort you out, buddy. Lava. Oh, we are still in danger. Yes, this area looks nice and secure, right up to the point where you trigger the ambush, because uh, trying to get into the tiny Easter egg area, bloody hell, the game is keen to uh, guard it, shall we say. Okay, down the last one goes. Help myself to loads of uh, five, five, six as well. And, uh, oh, well, this is just bloody perfect timing because, uh, yes, in just a second, uh, I'm going to be needing a lot of bloody science. This is uh, very helpful, in fact. And I genuinely believe this area was designed to try and distract you to not find the Easter egg that's just hidden around the site here. So, you know, you've got a barber shop, you can't actually get into it. There is this lovely cafe right here, used to be occupied by raiders, but not really anything going on in it here either. No, 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 no. As I say, what we're really looking for is just round the back over here. We are looking for Madam JL's reading room for the discreet gentleman because, uh, yes indeed, Fallout 3 contains a sex shop. So just head downstairs into this lovely tiny basement. We've got some mannequins and some slightly suggestive poses. Uh, we've got some sexy sleepwear that possibly was, you know, put on the mannequins at some point or another. We've got, yes, uh, various books, fortunately ruined and destroyed so we can't see precisely what was in them pre-war. And we've also got a whole bunch of drugs uh, dotted about too. Uh, together with, yes, a clear indication, they were selling some uh, booze here as well. So, uh, yes, booze and pornography and drugs and all sorts dotted about. Just a tiny room that someone in Bethesda decided needed to be here. There is a tiny bit more to this region, so yeah, if you just kind of keep going to the north and the west, you can find a couple of skill books, but honestly, I feel like we're doing, you know, okay on skills at this point. Instead, I'd like to share with you something much more valuable than skill points, and that is historical knowledge, because I was curious about this region, so I've been doing some historical reading about it. You see, I was just curious why a region in Washington, D.C. in Fallout 3 was called uh, L'Enfant Plaza, a name that sounded uh, very distinctly French. And uh, obviously I'm aware there was a strong connection between Americans and the French during the Revolutionary War, so I was just kind of curious if there was more to it than that. And uh, I found a really bloody fascinating story. The story of Pierre L'Enfant, a French aristocrat who got really bloody into this whole America thing. So much so that when the Revolutionary War began, he jumped straight over to America to help out the rebels and changed his name from Pierre to Peter to sound a bit more American. He actually served on George Washington's staff and after the war decided he wanted to keep working in America. At which point, George Washington himself asked him, as both an artist and engineer, to design the entire bloody city of Washington DC. Like, the plan for what the city was supposed to look like, which Peter and or Pierre L'Enfant actually bloody did. Now, this all sounds absolutely lovely, doesn't it? Like, you know, the American dream made flesh. Someone hops over from France, and within a matter of years, they're reporting to George Washington personally, designing Washington DC, and as a result, they get a lovely plaza named after them, immortalizing them forever. Except, um, that's, uh, that's not how it actually went. You see, there was a bit of chicanery while Longform was designing Washington DC that led to Washington deciding to fire Longform. And as a result, eventually, Longform went on to die in poverty and obscurity. Meanwhile, just a tiny bit of time later, the American Andrew Ellicott showed up in Washington's office and said, Hey, here's my plan for Washington DC. A plan for Washington DC that, aside from a couple of very minor changes, was almost identical to Longform's plan. And in both plans, Longforms and Ellicott's, there is no mention of a Longform Plaza. So how precisely did a fired and impoverished Frenchman end up with a region of DC named after him? Well, that actually came way later, in 1954, when William Zeckendorf just chose the name for a new DC redevelopment. And so the original designer of DC eventually became a permanent part of the city that he basically invented, even if he was somewhat robbed of the credit, at the time, which is a really lovely story if you ignore the bit in the middle where he died in poverty. 
anyway, let's get back to tracking down Cheryl, because though this is a very obscure and very bloody hard to follow mission at times, it's actually very interesting, because if you do, it gives you some really fun insights into how mutants operate, because that's what these guys were worried about and what they kept running into trouble with. All the mutants in the DC ruins, and this is one of the most comprehensive accounts of mutant behaviour in all of Fallout 3, which is really bloody interesting. So step one, we need to make our way to the Ranger headquarters, and the easiest way to do that is to go to, yes indeed, my old friend Anacostia Crossing, because uh, seriously, this subway station is a bloody marvel. Moment you're inside, it is the easiest journey in the world. Just a mosey on a straight through here. I think there might be, yeah, two raiders normally up top on the, uh, yeah, upper region above the platform. I took them out last time I was passing through. They haven't actually respawned yet. Then just don't bother going down onto the platform. That's how you get round the corner to museum. Nice and easy. Just, yep, straight over the raised area. And now we're just coming straight back out the other side. No raiders should be actually out on, yeah, this region. Might be a few hidden back there in the backstage area. If need be, you can activate a robot to help ya. And that's it. Just straight through here, two raiders between Rivet City and the ranger compounds. And here we go at Seawood Square, southeast. And this is, yes, as I say, not just the right area. It's the closest entrance you've got to the ranger compound. This place is bloody great, so... There we go, and of you crossing right there, because this is technically, of course, the same station. Another good way of spotting very short, easy jumps from one region to another. Just keep an eye on the names of the station, because very often, yeah, the same station does link to separate bubbles. I should also stress, by the way, Anacostia Crossing is the most nonsensical station in the entire game when it comes to, uh, yes, how it actually fits together, which is uh, Anacostia Crossing, 30 seconds down the track, and you make it to the museum station. I literally just stepped into this station, walked across, and then up the other side, and now I'm over here. Okay, Anacostia Crossing is the most geographically nonsensical space in the entire bloody game. Okay, there's plenty of mutants around here, so I've waited till morning, so yes, I've got a bit more visibility. Just start making my way up to the north here. That's what we want to do, and to watch out for, yes, masters and uh, overlords in particular. There may well be a few dotted about in this bit of the world, but here we go. This is where I want to go. As soon as I can, cut into uh, this street and start going north, though... I think we're going to pass by. Here we go. There is indeed some gibberish going on over a loudspeaker. Try to blabbo. So blast stains out. Blast the whole world out. We've all been blabbered. Say hello to the mad preacher. He just lives in this area and I love him. And yes, unfortunately, there's someone else nearby who doesn't really appreciate his lunatic ramblings. Make him shut up, please. Just make him shut up. And don't you worry, that's what I'm going to do, buddy. And uh, it's definitely not a good idea to tell this guy to go and investigate. Because uh, he will, and the mad preacher will explode himself and this guy. And you don't want that to happen, because it's a waste of very good explosives. He's... he's been up there for days. He's got all of those mines wired to a trigger. He won't let anyone in or out of the alley. If I try to leave, he'll set them off. But I can't stay here any longer. And there we flipping go. I would rather take him out without setting off the mines, because then the mines could be mine. But okay, let me just step for a second into Evil Universe B. Yes, with Charisma of Five, you could just persuade this guy to go and have a chat with him, and then we get to enjoy the fireworks. Oh. Um, well, you look like someone who's pretty smart. So if you say so, I'll give it a try. Okay. Here I go. This guy is uh, very trusting as it turns out. He's just going to uh, mosey on over in that direction. I deserve that. Okay, I deserved to explode that. What we're going to do instead, however, is, uh, yes, just to pick off the guy ourselves. Because he's not wearing any good armor, he's nothing special in the slightest. So we just want to, you know, tap him with a quick headshot. 
One a good shot should take him down. Lovely. And this guy is very happy about that. It's... It's so quiet. Yeah, I feel like he's been uh, dealing with that noise uh, for quite some time. And now that's done, we can go and uh, help ourselves to the mines. The funny old thing being, yes, the mines aren't actually armed. They're just sort of uh, sitting on the ground anyway. Along with a handful of nukes. So I'm just going to grab all of them. Anyway, that done, just keep on northwards and yeah, just barely around the corner from Anacostia Crossing and thus like, you know, 30 seconds from Rivet City, we have got ourselves a Riley's Rangers, lovely. So just take a quick turn in here, we're not supposed to come here yet, really, we've not been told to come here or anything, well, not by Riley at least, but yes, the note was indicating the Canterbury search team was definitely going to be passing by this region and this is where Cheryl was trying to make it. The Rangers, of course, are, as you're probably well aware, not home right now. Riley is currently unconscious in an underworld, and the rest of her Rangers are pinned down in another region. So, yes, as we're not supposed to be here, security is a bit on the tight side. Now, thankfully, my lockpicking is 100, so I can just get inside if I will. Fun fact, though, this compound is so far out of the way and so locked down, the game just kind of assumes the only way anyone would reasonably be inside her was if they'd already been invited. So everything here is marked in green. You can just take it. It's not stealing. But unfortunately, yes, the information I need is on this terminal, which is why I'm glad we just got that level up. So, slap on a Vault uniform I've been carrying around since the very first episode. On top of that, yeah, just a handful of uh, Mentats. That should be... Please tell me that's enough. That's got to be... There we go. Science 100. Lovely. Here we go. Notice from Canterbury Search Party. Bad news, Rangers haven't seen Cheryl and have got troubles of their own. The mutes have been snatching people left and right. Riley's men are going to keep an eye on it round here. They're suggesting we head to the western ruins across the river and search there, so I guess that's what we'll do. Damn it, sis, why didn't you just wait for us? And uh, this is where this mission gets absolutely cocking nonsensical because uh, we're told to go to the western ruins across the river. Okay, across the river... There's a much smaller bit of DC to explore. Three bubbles if I'm remembering correctly. There's yes, Mason that we've already been to. There is, hang about, yes, the Arlington Cemetery region where we've been to as well. And there's the Falls Church Metro where we haven't been just yet. I think that's all you've got in this area. So, okay, search those areas and try and find the next search log. Except, um, no. You could do that, but you wouldn't find what you were looking for. Because uh, the next log is not in the western ruins across the river. Instead, our next destination is, yes, right here immediately to the south of Dukov's place. And uh, I know what you're thinking, John. This is very clearly not across the river from Riley's Rangers. And also isn't actually part of the DC ruins. This is uh, outside the ruins. This is, you know, part of the wasteland. And uh, on both counts, you're correct. Because the next note is not where the previous note indicates it ought to be. Here we go. When you reach the really large bridge where if you are on the other side, there would be the raid ambush. There is a grave right here and that gets your search party log number three. It has to be a month gone since we were at the Citadel. Tracking mutants in the city is no easy job. Helps to have Mentats to keep everyone focused. We still have to be careful. These green bastards seem like they're on the move. You never hear them talk about it, but they're looking for something and people anyone they can get their hands on and obviously as we'll go on to discover in the plot he's completely bloody right they're looking for people to turn into more mutants and they're looking for vaults or information about vaults because they desperately need another supply of fev and in fact we'll be picking up on that in just a moment tracking muties through the city isn't the hard part they're good with metal always ripping up junkers and building crap out of the bits just follow their freak sculpture shows hard part is staying hidden Emmett took a bag cut on the leg from one of the spikes. Took two shirts to stop the bleeding. I hope these freaks can't smell blood. We're heading towards the citadel. Maybe they'll help patch him up. It's a relief to be outside the city for a day. We'll use the bridge and cross over. Check beyond the ruins on the west side. We can't hold out down here much longer. I can't just give up on Cheryl, but I might not end up having a choice. Emmett's in bad shape. We'll wait to cross the bridge until tomorrow. Rest in peace, Emmett. 
poor kid left Canterbury so fresh, I didn't want him along, but he really came into his own these past few weeks. He died in the night, no point bothering with those pricks in the Citadel now, we head into the city tomorrow. So, yes indeed. The weird thing about Note 3 is it just doesn't fit into the pattern of tracking you're told to do. Now, Note 4, as this note was indicating, yes, we want to check out the ruins immediately to the west of DC. Now, that is indeed where Note 4's going to be. But the weird thing is that also does sync up pretty nicely with Note 2. It's just really bloody easy to not find Note 3 because it's just sitting here in the middle of nowhere where the game doesn't tell you it is. It's just... Okay, was someone a Bethesda drunk when they made this mission? But uh, yes, once again, the actual grave in question is uh, really bloody tricky to locate. We well, yes, kind of midway between Greyditch, which would be over there, and Super Duper Martyrs, yes, somewhere down in that sort of a direction. In fact, you know what? That's the back of the Super Duper Martyr right here. So uh, yes, just go past all the ruins and uh, seriously, this is it right here. This is uh, very easy to overlook. Once again, another burial mound uh, right by the, uh, yes, sewer way station. Let's just uh, crack that open, help ourselves to another search party log, and uh, I have no idea how Bethesda thought there was uh, any bloody chance that people would just organically find these notes. This is... It's possibly the most difficult mission in Fallout 3, just because every single note is so obscurely and weirdly hidden away. We found something, the muties have a bunch of folks trussed up in a park nearby. Going to hole up and see what happens. Too risky to check for Cheryl until we know more. Kaya crept down and checked tonight. Cheryl's not there and most of the people are dead or close to it. Still, gonna keep an eye on them from here a little bit longer. Bastards are cleverer than they look. They stake people up, attract attention. Saw a couple of mercs get snatched investigating. One didn't put up much of a fight. They took him alive. Maybe hope to find Cheryl yet. Stakes aren't just to attract people either. Big old mother came by today, yanked a stiff from one of those spikes, and gnawed every scrap of meat off their bones. Looks like they were waiting for the big one to pack up. They're on the move. I've got the feeling they're taking these folks to the same place. They must have taken sis. Close call today. Downfall Brotherhood scouts nearly exposed us. Muties got him. Poor kid never stood a chance. Finally clear of the city. K refused to go any further and left for Canterbury. The mutants are heading west and I still aim to find where they're taking these people. Going to be harder to stay concealed out there in the open, but at least I don't have to worry about ghouls crawling up my ass all night. So that there has actually got some really rather interesting information about mutants, how they operate, and why their bases are as they are. When you stumble into a mutant camp and they've got a wasteland tied up, they're not just tied up because they haven't got round to carrying them off yet, they're doing it intentionally. They're effectively bait. And as for the stakes, that's not just an aesthetic, they're actually used to feed behemoths. When you've killed a human, you put them on the spikes, and that's how the behemoth knows what to eat. That's what the spikes are for. They've actually got a function, which is really rather bloody cool. And I know what you're thinking. John, the note clearly made reference to, yes, a super mutant encampment in a nearby playground that they were spying on from this location. So go and find the playground, and you can get some answers, except, um... I am willing to be corrected, like, please, prove me wrong in the comments down below, but I don't think it exists. This note references a location that doesn't exist in the game. There is no nearby playground that is also a super mutant encampment. And that's partly because this just isn't super mutant territory. Megaton's right there, so that's more, you know, ants and dogs and whatnot. Then over in this direction, we've got Greyditch, so there's plenty of ants. No super mutant camps around there in case, you know, they accidentally walked into town and killed all the ants for you. The only super mutants nearby are the ones, yeah, right on the river, down by Wilhelm's Wharf. But... That's not a playground. Most definitely not a playground. The only thing even approaching a playground nearby is, yes, over in Springvale. And that is definitely not a super mutant camp. So, ignore the playground. Instead, the mutants are heading west. I still aim to find out where they're taking these people. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second because, uh, okay, we are just also passing by right now a particularly high concentration of Easter eggs. Here we go, the exciting sexy world of sewer way stations. For you see as you might reasonably expect, this sewer way station is actually a teddy bear factory. 
I don't know why there are a huge number of teddy bears on this conveyor belt, but um, yes, there are. And uh, many of them are not entirely behaving properly. Because uh, this is the room where a Bethesda dev was given permission to put in some teddy bears behaving badly, and they decided that they were going to put in as many bloody misbehaving teddy bears as they could get away with. So here we've got two teddy bears and a bottle of whiskey and we're not going to speculate on what's happening there. Then we're just going to move around the corner and we have got, there we go, teddy bear with a needle in its arm, some cigarettes, some vodka and a shot glass. I think we've also got, hang on, around the back over here. This teddy bear has, yes, got a pistol and also is carrying around a, a grenade. Yes, for some reason all the teddy bears here are just not behaving as they should be. Plus, while we're passing by the sewer waste station, would you believe you can access the sewer here? Because it's not just a teddy bear factory. Now, mostly this is just, just a handful of uh, ferals, nothing to worry about here. But if you come in from uh, this direction, then just, uh, yes, take a bit of a trip to the right. Try not to, uh, yes, trigger the tripwire. There's definitely a grenade thing going on up there. They would just roll down and cause trouble. So then just uh, keep ignoring the traps. This is uh, one of the heaviest concentration of traps in the game, which is marvellous because uh, this person here does not want company. Just uh, mostly on through here. Disarm that. And in just a flipping second, uh, beyond the two damaged garden gnomes, uh, we have got... Hello there. Mr. Gallo, who... Okay. I appreciate I've just broken into his house, and now I'm just shooting him. But you can clearly see his health bar is red. If he were awake, he would definitely be trying to kill me. So yes, this here is Gallo. I have no idea what Gallo's deal is. Like, there is no indication in the game, or even in my favourite bit of not canon, the Fallout 3 strategy guide as to what the cock is going on with Gallo. But yes, he would appear to be a trader. He's wearing the trader outfit. He's carrying tales of a junk town jerky vendor with him. Bit of barter, never say no. He's definitely got some money on him, so... At some point, this guy was a trader, but then he also went a bit uh, bananas. We've also got a storage key, together with some ammunition. He appears to be fairly into Nuka-Cola. He's got, like, you know, various toys and banners right here. Ignore his eyeball. That wasn't there before I arrived. He's also got two pet rad roaches, though on this occasion they do not have names, sadly. And, uh, yes, indeed. We can just keep on keeping on. Hang about. Is this your... There we go. That's your storage room. Containing a huge amount of useful crafting materials. Like, uh, yeah. Crutches, uh, lawnmower blades, the motorcycle gas tanks. Basically, if you need to build something in this game. Like, you know, one the guns you're supposed to craft. And you don't have the materials. Uh, come here. Because he's got basically everything you need uh, to build several of everything. Okay, back outside and on to the absolutely baffling searching for Cheryl. Because uh, we still need to track down Cheryl, damn it. And uh, we were told at this point the super mutants were heading west. Which, um, you know, isn't particularly helpful in many ways. There is, after all, a very bloody large amount of west to the west of me. But, um, yes, as it turns out, where we're actually supposed to be going is... Uh, would you cocky believe it? The destination I just can't get away from. It's the Jury Street Metro yet again. Here we go. Remember that train yard we stumbled across previously when I just wanted to test out my lovely giant nuke launcher and my terrible shotgun and all of that nonsense? Well, uh, yes indeed. This is the final stage of that mission, which is uh, if you collect all four of those previous bloody notes, then something new has spawned inside this location. Say hello to Manny Cock, the guy who was writing all the notes that we found previously, Cheryl's brother. And on him, you get literally cocking nothing aside from generic loot. And this would of course spawn, yes, the behemoth, aside from the fact the behemoth already spawned for me. Now it's possible that yes, the actual intended spawn trigger is going to investigate Manny Cock. Because his notes did specifically mention, yes, people being put upon these spikes in order to feed the super mutants. But, um, yes, I struggle to accept that because the behemoth spawns are even if Manny Cock isn't there. So, okay, I don't know what the cock is going on with this mission, but there we go. We've located Manny Cock, who was trying to figure out what the super mutants were doing and never really found out because he died here. And you might be wondering, hang on, John, wasn't this mission called uh, Searching for Cheryl? What happened to Cheryl? 
We don't know. Cheryl is not in the cocky game. It's the weirdest, most nonsensical mission in the entire game. It's marvellous. Still on the plus side, it does even more horrifically recontextualize these here mutant camps, which is, uh, yes, the spikes that are definitely a bit more blood red at the top, and uh, gore bags that are left nice and suspended, and skeletons are pinned up here. That's what they were doing. They're leaving out food uh, for their behemoths, which is, uh, yes, somehow even worse than just stringing them up because they felt like it. Still, poor old Manny Cock, he was, you know, moving in the right direction. If you were to keep going a little bit further to the west and maybe a tiny bit up, maybe he would have been able to find out where the super mutants were coming from. But we'll come back to that later instead. Uh, yes, let's actually pick up what we were just saying. Learning about super mutants, their behaviours, uh, and what they actually want to achieve. Because there's a couple more regions I'd like to go and visit. Here we go, back to more familiar territory. Let's go back to, yes, the start of the GNR region, Chevy Chase North. But this time, we don't want to go down in that direction towards GNR. Instead, yeah, take a left and start heading east. Because barely around the corner, there is a second metro tunnel. And that's what we want to be using right now, to get into the, yes, remarkably generically named Metro Junction. And I will say, I think this is a mistake that Bethesda made, and part of the reason why people get so bloody confused inside these tunnels. Like, there are far too many tunnels called Metro Junction, Central Exchange, Irradiated Tunnel, Radiation Filled Tunnel, etc, etc. Yeah, I can understand why people got a bit on the uh, confused side still. On the plus side today, we've got nothing but ghouls, and I'm wearing the ghoul mask, so they're not going to be bothering me. Lovely. It's a very short hop here, just yeah, go down to the exchange, uh, then just uh, turn back on yourself here. Don't worry about a uh, GNR outpost, etc, etc. Couple of backup signs, just in case people got themselves turned around and went the wrong way. We just want to be heading, uh, yes, up in this direction, to this secondary platform over here. So welcome to Vernon Square. Yes, we popped up at just the right... Hello there. Kind of wasn't expecting to see you, actually. But, you know, while you're actually right here, I'll help myself to a couple of sneak attack crits and whatnot. Lovely! Okay, you know what? You're looking very, very flimsy already. This is marvellous. Just wait a second. And I don't like you holding that gun. Please drop the gun. But here we go. Just around the corner from where we just arrived, a destination I could hardly pass up at some point during this playthrough. Vault Tech Headquarters. Lovely. There are mutants here, there are robots here, and they are not best friends. So, okay, just hello there. Don't mind me, hello, sorry, I'm just recovering from some drugs at the moment. But yes, once you understand the full context of this game, the super mutant attack on vault -Tech headquarters becomes almost tragic, in a way, because we know why the super mutants do what they do. They need people, and they need FEV, because that's the only way they know how to reproduce. They're sterile. They have to just dip humans in the green goo to make more super mutants, and uh, they could get humans. That's easy, not a problem at all. In fact, we've just learned from Manny Cock there, the tactics for attracting and capturing humans are maybe a bit more sophisticated than you generally give them credit. But um, yes, finding more green goo, that's going to be a problem. The reason they're attacking this location is uh, they're trying to find more vaults. And this is Vault Tech Headquarters. But even if they were able to get hold of the information they needed, uh, it's not going to help them for the simple reason none of the other vaults inside Fallout 3 have any FEV inside them. In this area at least, Vault 87 was a one-off. The super mutants are doomed. They're dying. They're an endangered species. There's just... You know, while no one ever explicitly talks about it in-game because they're too busy trying to not get eaten, there is an element of tragedy to this entire story. Sadly, the vault -Tec headquarters itself, at least in terms of, yes, dungeon layout, is pretty bloody underwhelming. It's a standard office building with a giant pile of robots in it. The only trick being, as this is Vault Tank, and thus they were performing, you know, very unethical and illegal experiments that led to many people being killed, their security is pretty bloody good. So, if you want to access their mainframe in order to get the information pertaining to where all the vaults are located, yes, three separate terminals dotted around the admin level all need to be activated before you can get to the central server. Speaking of which, you can also, yes, detect certain unethical experiments being installed on the various emails. So, Vault 92, 14 WMB type noise generators, 14 broadcast relays, 14 monitoring terminals. So, 
Yes, indeed. We'll get into why those things might have been asked for when we get to Vault 92. And though we don't have a date and thus have no way of verifying whether, possibly in fact, the robo-brain was right and Vault 112 was shut two years before the Great War, we do know that at the bare minimum, it was marked as fully completed before the bombs fell. Oh, and speaking of tragic missed opportunities in Fallout 3, there is one terminal inside the Vault Tech headquarters that lists a company store that implies you might be able to buy Vault Tech bobbleheads right here inside this office and... Uh, Tragically, no. Available only to executive level employees. There's no, like, ID you could go and find to make this work. It's just for show, which is such a bloody shame. Here we go. Three terminals have been ticked off. A light goes green. We can now access the central vault tech mainframe. And also, seriously, while I'm thinking about it, it is so bloody weird that in vault tech headquarters, uh, there isn't a vault tech bobblehead. Like, Surely there should be one here. It's literally where Vault Boy comes from. Anyway, just download this information and now we have got, yes indeed, Vault Tech information, various locations. It says access codes as well, though you don't actually need those access codes for anything. Funny old thing though, as you may notice there, the vaults it gives you the locations of are Vault 87, 92, 101, 106 and 108. It doesn't give you the location of Vault 112, even though 112 is mentioned in the email we saw earlier. So I guess we can just sort of reasonably assume that in-universe, Braun had enough pull that he could keep his vault even off Vault Tech's most secure servers. Meanwhile, outside of universe, it just makes sense to just not give the player information that might lead to them accidentally breaking the main plots. Still, onwards and upwards, or to be precise, onwards and downwards, because uh, you may recall earlier I was talking about, yes, how the DC ruins is made up of uh, distinct bubbles of uh, urban space. Fun thing about these bubbles, there are 12 of them, 13 in this game, because yes, the train station to New Vegas is in its own brand new bubble, but 12 uh, in the base game. Seven of those bubbles uh, you can access from the outside world, i.e. anywhere in the wasteland uh, you might find a sewer, go down, come back up again, you're inside a bubble. Four of them are one step removed from the wasteland, i.e. you need to go down a sewer, into a bubble, down another sewer, and then into the secondary bubble. Okay, that's 11 of the 12. Only one bubble is two steps removed. Okay, wasteland to metro to bubble to metro to bubble to metro to bloody hell you put this one a long way out the way, didn't ya? And just like the long form plaza, this location, nobody ever tells you to go there. And we're not bloody done with how Bethesda hid this thing away yet, which is, uh, you know what, here we go, metro station. Nice and obvious, big metro sign right here, etc, etc. No, 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 this next one, they bloody hid it inside the ruins. So just a mosey on around the corner of uh, Vernon Square, and in just a flipping second, uh, we'll get to a giant and extremely bloody radioactive crater. So, you know, just uh, pop some Radex and whatnot. Even with Radex applied, uh, bloody hell, this thing is extraordinarily radioactive. It would appear that, yes, yeah, some form of a nuclear plane just sort of uh, crashed into this area. So, okay, even with Radaway on, this is giving me a lot of bloody rats. Down at the bottom underneath the crater, you've got this tiny, tiny sewer area. Nothing too much going on here, just... A very large amount of rads, a couple of super mutants, a few corpses dodged around, nothing too special really. But no, step outside, leave that be. What we want is over there, over in that corner. So okay, just uh, loop around, just avoid the ridiculous amount of rads uh, that I am currently taking. Don't mind me, guys. And here we go, just cut through the wreckage here. I'm still being shot. There's also this mines. There's definitely mines. Uh, Vernon Square East, marvellous. This is, oh, this is not actually what I wanted, is it? No, no, it's not. Hang about. Hang on, just check the sign. Abernathy, yes, Abernathy is what I wanted. Sorry. You see this area? Even I get bloody confused navigating it sometimes. There's just so many ruins, uh, so many rads, so many bloody super mutants. But they sort of uh, hide this one out of the way. Behind this here wreckage and the far side of a ludicrously radioactive crater. To do everything they can to try and make the player say, you know what? No, screw it. I'm just going to run straight past this area and not pay too much attention. But if you're a smart cookie, and as I've been advising you, have started reading the maps here, then you might reasonably assume that yes, indeed. If you want to get to Tacoma, you've got to go via Abernathy. It's literally the only way to get there. So, 
Okay, let's go and find uh, one of the most ludicrously, stupidly hidden areas uh, in all of Fallout 3. And I do not blame you if you've taken one look inside this tunnel and decided, you know what, no, I choose life because... Uh, you have got mutants, you have got cocking, and myler, kings and whatnot. And please stop bending over. I'd like to shoot you in the back of the head, please. Thank you, lovely. Okay, bare minimum, yeah, nice sneak attack in the head. That'll take care of you without too much in the way of a difficulty. And off your... How did you miss? And just to top it off, this is one of the longest tunnels in the game. It is a long, long bloody way. Alright, many, many enemies between Abernathy and Tacoma. Alright, so it's not an easy jaunt. This is a trip that takes some cocky commitments. And here we go, Tacoma Station, literally the end of the line, or at least, you know, the end of the line within this game. And uh, it is a surprisingly large area for one that is uh, so far out the way and doesn't really contribute much to any mission whatsoever. Let's just uh, keep on keeping on. Eyes open because, uh, yes indeed, we're dealing with uh, super mutants with uh, missile launchers and whatnot. So, oh, that's a fat man. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. And he's coming in this direction. Better or better. Okay, my plan is to let them come down the road for a second because I need, yes, the one with the fat man to be close enough that I can shoot the fat man out of his hands. Otherwise, he's going to fight the fat man, then basically I'm going to die. Linkage repeater seems like a good bet to me. That's so, why I right, just wait. Wait. Okay, I think he's holding steady. That's just a brute. Don't worry about that. Master. Unlikely to get a hit in the head. Let's just go for one like tap in the arm. That should do some good work. Lovely. Now you're probably going to pull out your fat man in just a second. There's some laser stuff. Okay. The fat man needs to go down. All right. One. That looks like a good hit to me. And he's still holding it. Now he's not. Excellent. Okay. Now let's see if we can just blow up that car. There we go. That's what you want to do. Okay. He's possibly trying to get hold of the fat man. If he is, down you go. Thank you very much for the crits. And now we get into cover. Oh, you know what? That was pretty damn stylish. Okay. Remaining brutes go down. They never got hold of the fat man again. But seriously, this area and the approach to it, just everything about it, is a bit of a nightmare. It's delightful. And even better, the game kind of acknowledges that this is a really rare out-of-the-way territory because uh, there are some unique bits and pieces uh, you could get just to, you know, celebrate having got here. Just nip inside nifty thrifty. And you can help yourself to a unique Tacoma Park Little League cap. Marvellous. It's not even that bad, to be honest. Explosives plus five, melee weapons plus five. You could do worse than that. Lovely. For the most part, though, this area is, yeah, pretty linear. It's basically just, yes, a terrifying gauntlet against a series of escalating enemies. So, um, yes, we just took care of a master with a fat man. That's not the toughest thing we're going to be fighting today. Here we go. Get to the top of the street. Just cut through the housing and we get to our real ultimate destination, the Tacoma Industrial Park. And we are walking uh, very much into a war zone, which, as I say, I do always enjoy it when that happens. So on this occasion, it's Talon Company Mercs taking on uh, Super Mutants. So uh, two very tough competitors uh, in the field, uh, it must be said. So no reason for me to get involved. Just, you know, stay back, enjoy the trouble, see who ultimately ends up winning. I do not know who it's going to be. Like... I will say, I think possibly the Talon Company boats have picked up some upgraded armor in Tale of Two Wasteland, so that might give them an edge, potentially. The mutants are still firing. There's, oh, there's still a lot of mutants, actually. Okay, you know what? I've decided I'm going to get involved here. So one, a little brute can go down. No trouble. Lovely. Just helping a little bit here. And, uh oh I feel like possibly... Okay, I feel like at this point... They're all dead, and now the mutants know I'm here. Good, 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 good. This has gone horribly wrong. Right, loop around the outside. No, that master is firing at someone who's not me, which is excellently good news. Okay, then you. One more master here. A couple of nice easy shots in the head. Linkage repeater. Absolute 
beast of a gun, which is beautiful. And back to hitting. Good. I picked my moment just right there. But the fun has only just begun with this region. Here we go. Just keep on moseying around for a second. And yes, this here. This is what we want, because over in the distance, we have got an even tougher opponent. Just uh, give me one second here, and uh, there we go. We may have been robbed of a behemoth earlier, but on this occasion, oh no, we're going to be getting one anyway. And uh, you know what? Those are pretty big, pretty tough, all the rest of it. But we've got a bit of a tool to help us out here too, which is uh, just flick the switch right here. Honestly, I feel like I don't even need to uh, read the instructions. I'm very happy to just push the button that says artillery on it. That there, that's a good time as far as I'm concerned. So uh, keep trying to uh, push the switch a few more times. Lovely. Keep that artillery raining down. They cannot take to me. So yes, basically we're just bombing super mutants, which is beautiful. It's just uh, keep on keeping on with the fire. Lovely. And here we go. In just a second, yes, the switch sort of uh, breaks. But hang about, hang about, hang about. I am sure I must have a, a lovely skill magazine for this. Oh yes, perfect timing at fixing things. Just, you know, trying to fix that. And uh, successfully fixed. I can't even remember what the actual, uh, yes, thing is. But once you've got that done, now it will just work infinitely forever. You can just keep nuking those super mutants. They will never detect you as far as I'm aware. Oh, that was a good hit on the behemoth right there. But honestly, I appreciate this. This is a lovely secret at the end of the world. That after so many adventures where we had to take on giant piles of tanky super mutants, what do you get as a reward for coming all the way out here? My goodness, it's a shooting gallery. Where you just get to enjoy tossing artillery onto super mutants and watching them slowly die. Though hilariously on the highest difficulties, yes, the artillery just doesn't do that much to a behemoth. So you're kind of better off just getting in there. If you've got the right shotgun, just knock it to the ground with one of those. Lovely. You've just been, yep, knocked over. Then just uh, do a little bit more damage. Lovely. Don't mind me, but hey. Oh, and perfect timing as he just disintegrates to a fire lance. Apparently we are, ooh, we're still in caution. Did I forget about somebody? I have no idea how any of you are still alive. There we go, level 22, spectacular. So, okay. On this occasion, I would say yes. Let's start getting energy weapons and explosives moving in a lovely good direction. And, ah, oh, I missed this. So thank you so much to the comments who pointed it out. Grim Reaper's Sprint has two ranks in this mod, meaning rank one is the New Vegas Grim Reaper's Sprint, meaning you get a handful of action points back when you kill someone. But there's a second rank, which basically turns this into the original Fallout 3 Grim Reaper's Sprint. Kill someone in advance, you get all of your AP back. So, oh bloody hell yes, every time no contest. But we're still not done either, as amazing as that tiny set piece is, which is, uh, yes, just nip into the back alley, and you can access a factory. The factory itself is nothing special. At one end, you get out onto a balcony. That means, yes, any enemies you happen to have missed on your way in, you've got a good sniping spot down on them. Lovely. But no. The real joy is at the other end of the factory. Right behind you, as you enter, in fact. Here we go, you come in right over there, but no, ignore the factory in front of you, ignore the super mutants, just come out of the back over here, and now, in just a second, we appear to be on the roof, but follow the path down, and now with the far side of this barricade, we are now even cookie deeper into the area beyond the edge of the world. And naturally, of course, you would assume the correct way to go would be just, yes, follow the path around. Couple more super mutants inside a camp. Just keep on keeping on. Then, just around the corner, you've got a ramp that leads you back round to the beginning. So, again, easy to assume this is just the Skyrim door. Because, uh, for some reason, Fallout 3 is just determined to hide uh, layer upon layer upon layer of secrets in this area. Because, no, this is not the end of the area. That is not the Skyrim door. That is a fake Skyrim door designed as a decoy. What you're supposed to do instead is, yes, this lovely area, completely ignore the nice safety rail, just hop off here into the water, up onto the pipe, hop onto here. So now, yes, you're walking along a narrow ledge that clearly isn't the path, 
and instead go this direction into this alleyway that looks a lot like a dead end, but actually cocking isn't. And finally, at long bloody last, we reach the real end of the line. All right, a giant radioactive pool of ghouls. And uh, to my mind, probably the best hidden NPC in this entire game. Say hello to Miss Isabella Prouts. There she is, right next to her good friend, Jason. Marvelous. Now, fortunately, yes, these ghouls are fine with me because I'm wearing the ghoul mask. So, uh, Reavers, Glowing Ones, etc. Me and them, 100% A-OK. -okay. But, um, yes, there is uh, a tiny story right here at the end of the world. Because in the camp just around the corner, she has left some very comprehensive notes. While Jason was scavenging the ruins, I caught a glimpse of a group by the pool in the afternoon. Contrary to what most people think, they don't fear the daylight at all, but they do seem to prefer indoor habitats. So what we've got here is a ghoul researcher, and uh, seriously, you do not want to be a researcher in the Fallout universe. Okay, Isabella Proud, ghoul researcher, dead. Earlier this very episode, Manny Cock attempted to be an amateur super mutant researcher, ended up dead. The ant researcher, even though he was literally inside the friendly don't attack you ant hill, he still ended up dead. Researchers, they come to a bad end. But just like Manny Cock provides some really interesting insights about super mutants, Isabella Proud provides some fun insights about ghouls as well. So she conducted an experiment where she filled various basins with different levels of irradiated water. And consistent with her predictions, they seem to prefer water with high rad content. Okay, nothing too surprising there, but the implication is you can sort of attract or maybe lead ghouls by just, you know, presenting them with a suitably high radiation thing that they might wish to go towards. Today I was approached by one of them. I've decided to call her Melinda. I'm not actually sure if there's a way to establish gender, but Melinda moved in a way that appeared feminine to me. She caught me off guard while I was checking water levels in the experimental basins. For a moment, I wished I'd taken that pistol that Jason insisted on me carrying. She grasped my arm, but instead of attacking, she appeared to sniff my arm, where some of the scavenged resin I'd been using to irradiate the basin had spilled on my suit. Moments later, she was gone. Must consider some way of tagging them. So... Yes, indeed. Beginning of a hypothesis here. If you were wearing, say, something that was uh, highly irradiated, maybe on the exterior of a radiation-proof suit, you might be able to walk safely among ghouls. And we know that is possible because I'm literally wearing a ghoul mask that works right now. Though, given uh, I'm not taking rad damage, uh, presumably the principle is uh, distinct. Like, it's possible the ghoul mask is just made of uh, stitched-together dead ghoul skin. I feel like it's as simple as that, potentially. Slept outdoors again last night, Jason insists on staying with me this time, and built a camouflage screen for us to sleep in. I radiated the main body of water as heavily as I could to try and draw them out. My plan seems to have worked, because I saw a few, I think Melinda was among them, come into the open at dusk and settle into the water. After dark, one I believe to be the alpha male, I've taken to calling him Samuel, emerged with the rest of the group. I had to switch my Geiger counter off when he arrived to avoid being heard. I can't imagine the radiation levels the glowing ones must be infused with. I think that must be why he's the alpha. The others are so drawn to him because of his immense radiation. So okay, assuming her initial supposition is correct, the ghouls are drawn to radiation. Yes, the ghouls that are heavily irradiated and can produce rads would logically be the leaders. Potentially there is a hierarchy. Not something you think about generally in terms of Fallout ghouls, but it's entirely possible. It kind of makes sense. And unfortunately, this here is the last entry. I need to make contact again. I've coated my suit in resin. I will try approaching the group tomorrow at dusk. Observation hasn't revealed anything new. Direct contact is required if I'm going to continue to learn about them. I know Jason would never understand, but this won't work if his suit isn't also irradiated. I'll coat it while he's gone scavenging during the afternoon, and we'll set up camp tonight by the water before dusk. And uh, unfortunately, it turns out that was a very, very bad idea. We can't be 100% sure what happened, but... I mean, we could be like 99% confident that the resin did not fool at least one of them. Potentially it was enough to fool a basic feral, but not enough to fool a glowing one. And as a result, they died that very evening. But still, we got some really interesting learning out of that. And it's just, it's so cool that there are tiny stories like this, just so far out of the way, at the very edge of the world. 
Tacoma Industrial is already pretty much right at the map's edge. We are over the edge of the map right now. This is properly beyond the edge of the world glowing sea territory. So you know what? I would say having visited some of the most obscure and remote regions in all of Fallout 3, that is enough for now. But as for next week, that is going to be a mystery because I've not decided yet. Maybe we'll do some main plot and bring the Enclave into the world. Maybe we'll visit some vaults. Maybe I'll just go looking around for more buried away treasure. So join me next week and we will find out together. Hopefully you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.